There are lots of famous mysteries that you can explain now if you carefully study the details. The tragedy of the Titanic, for example. Anyone can recreate a picture of that night and build a map of those terrible events with all the information available online now. You can also explain what's going on in the Bermuda Triangle. Spoiler alert, nothing mysterious about it. Missing trains, time-traveling planes, strange black holes in the desert, spooky sounds, visual anomalies. You may not find the answers to all these riddles right away, but if you apply some critical thinking and a whole lot of dedication, you can eventually gain a better, more practical understanding of what exactly is going on. So, I'm now gonna tell you about the disappearance of Martha Wright. But this story is not like all the others I just mentioned. This mysterious and creepy puzzle is almost impossible to solve. There are no leads, no clues, no theories that make any sense of it. This is one of those cases that can really make you feel clueless, pun intended. But regardless, I'll still try my best to explain it to you. So, let's look at this story from the very beginning and try not to miss even the tiniest details. The year is 1975. Jackson Wright and his wife Martha Wright are going by car from New Jersey to New York. It's a little hot inside the cabin, so Jackson turns on his AC. The road they're on leads them into the Lincoln Tunnel. They're driving in there, slowing down a bit. After a few minutes, Jackson starts to wipe the windshield, holding his hand on the wheel. Some condensation has accumulated on the glass because of the unstable conditioner. The rear window is also slightly fogged up, so Jackson slows down and then stops the car. There are no other vehicles in the tunnel. Jackson takes two rags out of the glove compartment. He gives one of them to Martha and asks her to wipe the rear window. His wife is moving into the back seat to remove the condensation. She doesn't leave the car. Jackson wipes the front window for a few seconds, turns to Martha and can't find her. She's vanished. All the doors are closed. There is only one car in the tunnel. Jackson's. At first, he thinks it's some kind of a joke. He looks carefully at the back seats and out the windows. Martha, where are you? He asks in fear in his voice. He opens the door with his hands trembling. Martha, Jackson screams. His voice echoes through the entire dark tunnel. Martha Wright has just literally vanished into thin air. It's a bit creepy, isn't it? Poor Martha and poor Jackson. At first glance, some might say that the real reason for Martha's disappearance is her husband, and that he made the whole story up as an excuse. We don't know what kind of relationship they were in. Maybe they had a fight or planned a divorce. Yes, it would be easy to blame the husband, but you don't have enough evidence to support that conclusion. Immediately after the disappearance, Jackson contacted the police. An investigation began. Detectives interviewed people passing by the tunnel that day. They carefully studied all the streets, alleys, and even the nearest basements. Of course, they didn't ignore the possibility that Jackson was guilty, but they couldn't find any evidence to that effect either. It almost seemed like Martha didn't exist at all. Jackson loved his wife. He couldn't get over the fact that no one could explain her disappearance. The police certainly couldn't find her. Jackson drove through that tunnel many times, hoping that one day, in the light of his headlights, the silhouette of his missing wife would appear. Are you getting nervous? Well, you need to beat that fear if you want to figure things out. You need to assess the situation with a clear mind. Okay, so. It was 1975. There were no phones or cameras. There was one car in a dark tunnel. I'm sure there are some rooms and long corridors that connect the Lincoln Tunnel to the sewer system or the subway. So I'm thinking, what if someone took Martha Wright out of her car? What if it was mole people? You've probably heard of them. 
people that live in the underground labyrinths of the New York subway. There are a lot of rumors about them. The story goes that for some reason, they refused to live like ordinary citizens of the city and descended into its dungeons. They have no contact with sunlight at all. They can see in the dark. Their diet consists of rats and trash. They can quickly crawl on all fours and even climb walls. Their sense of smell is developed and they can sense an uninvited guest from afar. Sometimes they get out of their tunnels at night to gather provisions or food. What if on that terrible day in 1975, the mole people crept up to the car unnoticed, quietly opened the door, grabbed Martha, and dragged her into the kingdom of darkness? Jackson might not have noticed it. Sounds compelling, right? Well, fortunately, all these stories about mole people are fictional. There are people who live in the underground tunnel systems of major cities, but they don't look like moles and they eat normal food. In other words, they're just people trying to survive. There are many articles on the internet describing their real life. They come down to live in the tunnels for various reasons. The most common story is that for one reason or another, they couldn't make it in the city. For example, one guy lost his job and had a fight with his wife and got injured, so everyone abandoned him and his only option was to migrate down below. There was one story of one woman who tried to hide from some bad people on those underground labyrinths. Hundreds and even thousands of people live in environments like these, each for their own reasons. And believe me, their way of life is not as terrible as it may seem. Many people in these tunnels have electrical appliances, internet access, water, and heating. Inside many of these communities, it is forbidden to steal, harm anybody, or behave rudely or obscenely. People here try to help each other. During the day, they can earn money by washing cars, or handing out bottles, or at the laundry. At night, they return back to the tunnels. Lots of these people just couldn't integrate into society. Some people are happier there because they don't have to pay taxes and rent. They don't have to follow the rules and pretend to be someone they aren't. Many of them are polite, smart, and well-educated. Often they are friends with many street artists and filmmakers. It's a unique lifestyle, all on its own, with its own communities. Occasionally, some of them would manage to get out of those tunnels, but then return feeling that they really belong to the tunnel system and couldn't quite integrate with the world up above. It was in 1904 when the first line of the New York subway opened that stories about these mole people began to spread. Since then, these stories have been overrun with legends and myths. The city's residents thought that the tunnel's inhabitants had created secret societies with their own system of rules and laws, infrastructure, and the division between poor and rich. Few people ventured down there to check. But in the late 90s, more and more journalists began to conduct investigations about these mole people. Eventually, the myth was debunked. But who knows? Maybe in the 1970s, there were many dangerous people among the tunnel inhabitants. Honestly, I can't believe that they managed to pull Martha out of the car and into the tunnels without Jackson noticing. For one thing, she would have screamed or tried to kick loose. Plus, all the car doors were closed. So, as far as theories go, this ain't it. Okay, then let's keep looking. We have the car, the AC, the tunnel, the sunny weather. All right, let's look at the tunnel again. It seems to me that something is wrong with it. Something in the story doesn't quite add up. If we look at the maps and traffic data, we will see that many drivers use the Lincoln Tunnel daily. I'm sure it was just as popular in the 1970s. So how is it possible that Jackson and his wife were the only visitors to this tunnel in the middle of the day? They were driving in it for a few minutes, then stopped to wipe the windows. And not a single car passed by during that time. The tunnel wasn't closed or under repair. Jackson wouldn't have been able to get there if that went the truth. 
People walk through this tunnel in any weather. They hide here from the rain and heat and use the tunnels like a little shortcut. You can meet anyone there, at night, early in the morning, and in the afternoon. Why didn't Jackson see anyone? All right, we're getting nowhere with this. Let's look at this story from a different angle. Where were Jackson and Martha coming from? Where exactly were they going? To visit friends? Maybe their relatives? And who exactly were they? That's something we ought to know, right? And luckily for us, that's exactly where the most interesting part of the story actually is. As it turns out, there is no information about this married couple on the internet. You can check phone directories, databases, marriage registrations, and other sources, but you won't find Martha or Jackson Wright. You won't find their friends or relatives. That's strange, but what about the police? The case of the disappearance of Martha Wright is quite famous after all. Some big newspapers wrote about it. Perhaps someone's even covered it on TV. But if you search for it, you will soon find that the information about Martha Wright is basically the same on all websites. It's a small column without any additional information. If you search on Google Books, you'll find one result. A book describing mystical tales with no evidence. Reading it, it really just feels like someone just took all of the world's most famous urban legends and put them together on one page. Well, there you go. Looks like we found our answer. Martha Wright didn't disappear because she never really existed. But don't give the credit to me. I'm not the genius who solved this. To find the answer, I visited the greatest detective community in the world, Reddit users. They solved the mystery of Martha's disappearance long ago and shared it with everyone. Okay, here's a rhetorical question. Why did reputable newspapers publish an article about Martha Wright? And this wouldn't be the only time either. This story is similar to another famous case about a young guy who was walking through a field near his farm and just vanished into thin air. His family and friends saw it with their own eyes. This story appeared in several films and TV shows about mystical phenomena without any evidence or details. What's the point of making it up? Well, to sell copies. People like these kinds of riddles. People can be strangely captivated by the prospect of the unknown. One of the most popular fake mysteries was about the Pan Am Flight 914. This plane took off in 1955 from New York and then disappeared from all radars. It was supposed to arrive in Florida a few hours later, but it landed at the airport in Venezuela 37 years later. Another case, 1954. Santiago Airlines Flight 513 took off from an airport in West Germany. The plane was due to land in Brazil in 18 hours. There were 88 passengers and four crew members on board. The plane disappeared from the sky and from the radar. Air traffic controllers tried contacting the pilots, but didn't receive any response. 18 hours later, they called the airport in Brazil. Those dispatchers couldn't confirm the plane's landing. They couldn't contact it either. The plane did eventually land on October 12th, 1989. It was in perfect condition, but none of the passengers had survived. These stories seem unrelated to each other, but they do have two things in common. First, you won't find a list of passengers or employees. You'll also find that those dispatches from the 50s and 80s didn't exist either. Second, you'll find that both of these stories were actually published in the same newspaper, one known for its tall tales and fake news. Once again, there is nothing mystical about these cases. But we have gotten to the truth. And now we know a lot more about how to evaluate information critically. The next time you hear about some girl seeing a flying monster near a rock festival or some guy disappearing from his pool, don't just believe it right away. Try to study the details. Check the sources. As a rule, these kinds of fantastical stories fall apart if you look at them just a little more closely. The real world is complicated and mysterious, but it is by no means impossible to understand. You just need to think critically.
and pay attention to the details. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.